The story takes place in my friend's rural hometown. It's a bit weird. It tells a story about a treasure curse. We were doing cultural tourism in Shaanxi at the time. You may not know that doing. Cultural tourism is expensive. The point is that cultural tourism is just a form. If you want to open the cultural line, from early development to later publicity, every step requires a lot of money. Funds. Fortunately, this guy is very rich. To be precise, his family is very rich, and their family is passed down from generation to generation, so he can easily get a lot of money. As for where his family's money comes from or what they do, we don't dare to ask if he doesn't tell us. If we ask anything, do we dare to use the money? So this has always been a mystery. After half a year of hard work, we can finally open the door to welcome guests. But that night, the buddy suddenly told us that he had to go back to his hometown in the northeast immediately. There was something urgent at home. We were anxious at that time, seeing that the hens we had raised for more than half a year were about to lay eggs. It would be too ruthless and cruel to deprive the hens of food. Seeing that everyone was worried, he threw down a card and told us, don't be afraid, the money in this card is enough, then walked away. We held the card and looked at his back, he was so cool, although everyone was a little caught off guard by his departure, they still felt quite at ease, because according to normal people's thinking, it is impossible for him to leave at this time, unexpectedly. He really left the chicken behind when he left. Since he left, I haven't answered my phone calls or replied to my messages. Since the opening of the tourist route required a large amount of money. For publicity, we spent all our money. When we finally tried to use the money in his card, we found that there was no money in the card at all. Within a few months, we were able to survive can't go down anymore. When the project failed, everyone went their separate ways and looked for other options. I was very puzzled at the time. Although this guy was rich, he usually did things fairly steadily and was not like that unreliable person. Besides, he has already invested a lot of money in the early stage. Even if the project goes yellow and the money is wasted, he still has to at least listen to it. How can he just disappear? Until two years later, I met him again. He was wearing a loose denim suit. His hair was a little long, covering his ears, and he looked a little decadent. When he saw me, he apologized profusely, saying that he was sorry for everyone and failed everyone's hard work, and he immediately comforted me. He said that the most important thing for young people is ideals, and there is no question of living up to them. Besides, most of the original funds were provided by him. Why did it just take some time? We chatted for a long time in a tea house. When he asked me where everyone was going, I explained to him one by one that so and so had found a job and so and so was continuing to fumble around in business. At the end of the conversation, I asked him the question I had from that year. I asked him, you were fine back then, why did you suddenly disappear? He smoothed the hair in front of his forehead, picked up the tea cup and took a sip and said, well, there was indeed something going on at home at that time. It was really a last resort. Seeing that he was a little embarrassed, I didn't continue. After asking for a long time, he suddenly asked me, do you believe in curses? I was a little surprised by his question. I shook my head. The reason why I shook my head was not that I didn't believe in curses, but that there was such a thing as curses. Zuan Zhiu Zuan is often misunderstood by people. I replied, there are so many evil things. Most of the so-called curses are chemical reactions, but these reactions are not easy to detect. Just like a virus, it will spread under specific conditions and through specific media, especially within a family. This made many people mistakenly think it was a curse. He also shook his head and said, I didn't tell the whole story. Yes, because their family is indeed cursed. To be precise, all the women with foreign surnames in their family are cursed. The so-called women with foreign surnames are the women who married into his family, such as his great-grandmother, grandma, and mother. He said that these women in his family all have a problem. He said that they have good eyes, but they go blind without any warning, and then die soon. Very strange. The time he left suddenly, 
he was called home by his father to deal with the matter of his mother's blindness. I asked him what happened, he said that it all started with a great immortal worshipped by his family, whose ancestral home is Shandong. In order to survive, his great-grandfather wandered all the way to the northeast with the army that broke through the border, and later reclaimed wasteland there, and slowly the big family came into being. He said with emotion that his great-grandfather was able to endure hardships and worked hard, and he was in charge of everything inside and outside the family. His great-grandmother never interfered, because his great-grandmother had another special identity, that is, she was a local disciple, that is, a disciple, their family enshrines a Liuxin, one of the five great immortals, as for why he worshipped it and what the origin was, he couldn't tell clearly, he only knew that his great-grandmother and great-grandfather had been worshipping it before they got married, he told me that the Liuxin was very spiritual and had great powers, when he was very young, his family was still very poor, at that time, my great-grandfather was old and raised his family at home. The several acres of land at home were mainly managed by his grandparents. His parents took him to Shanghai and worked in an electrical appliance factory. When he fell ill, he went to several hospitals. To no avail, his father called home and asked Daxon to take a look. Unexpectedly, Daxon told them that there was nothing serious about the child's illness and reassured them that he would be fine the next day. That night he had a strange dream. He dreamed of a big white snake, with its whole body crystal clear and glowing white. It came to his bed with a sullen voice, then slowly lowered its head and vomited a pea-sized pill. At home, that pill is floating in the air. Finally it floated into his mouth. His illness suddenly improved the next day, which was miraculous. He told his great-grandmother about this strange dream, and the old lady said that it was the immortal who gave him the medicine himself, and he had to be grateful, but their family did not continue to worship Lu Zion, when he was six years old. One day suddenly, he and his parents were called home by his grandfather, saying that the family wanted to discuss something together, if this matter is handled properly, my father will never have to go out to work again, and he will even have an unimaginable windfall. They rushed home overnight, and after their father carefully interrogated him, Grandpa said that their family had an opportunity to make a fortune, which was an immeasurable fortune. If they can get this windfall, they can make their ancestors rich and prosperous for generations to come. What kind of windfall is it specifically? His grandfather said that not long ago, when he went to work in the fields, he found a few copper coins. At that time, he thought he had dug the tomb of a Manchu noble, so he continued digging at the same spot. As a result, the more he dug, the more copper coins he found. When he had dug four or five meters, there was a sudden boom and the earth beneath his feet collapsed. When he fell, he was choked by the scattered dust and his whole body fell apart. When the dust around him dispersed, he found that it was completely dark. He didn't know where it was. He was a little scared. So he yelled a few times, but there was no echo except for the echo. He walked around the wall step by step, and suddenly he tripped over something at his feet. He stumbled and fell directly to the ground. He sat up and reached out to touch his feet. It turned out that there were things under his feet that were as fast as bricks, but they were larger than normal bricks. It was much smaller. He was so angry that he cursed a few times. He grabbed a piece with his hands and put it into his pocket. He stood up and continued to walk forward. As a result, he was blocked by an earth wall before he took two steps, holding onto the wall and continuing to walk along the wall. After walking for about 10 minutes, he discovered that the earth and wall had an arc, and it was an internal arc. He was anxious at that time. Since the wall is an inner arc, it is very likely that it is a closed circle. If this is the case, even if you try to move forward, you will never reach the end. In order to confirm his conjecture, he made a big mark on the earth wall with his hand, and then continued to move forward while supporting the wall. Twenty minutes later, he collapsed on the ground because he touched the mark again. Yes, this is a circle. He sat on the ground and shouted for help. He looked up and saw that the top of his head was also dark, with not a trace of light coming through. 
It seemed that it was still some distance away from the ground. After a while, he stood up helplessly again and started to push the wall. He knew that doing so would most likely lead to death. It's futile, but there is no better way at the moment, so we can't just sit and wait for death. Besides, there are all earthen walls here. What if they can be knocked down? He walked around the wall and pushed. The more he pushed, the weaker he became. The more he pushed, the more desperate he became. Just when he was on the verge of collapse, his arms suddenly softened and he fell into the wall, making a big hole in the wall. He was overjoyed and quickly pulled away the soil at the entrance of the hole and stretched his head into the hole. Looking inside, it was still pitch black. He reached in and touched it again, only to realize that this was not a cave, but a hole in the earth wall. On the other side of the hole was another space, so he went after getting through. The other side of the hole was not very spacious and could only accommodate one person barely able to stand and walk. So he held onto the wall, felt the darkness, and kept walking forward. He didn't know how long he had walked, but suddenly he found a trace of light far away in front of him. In an instant, the wild horse he wanted to escape rolled towards the light. Run. He finally came out. The exit was at the foot of a mountain, an inconspicuous small cave. It was already evening when he returned home. He told his father, my friend's great-grandfather, about his experience. The old man sighed deeply and said it would be good if the preacher came back. He changed out of his dirt-covered clothes and prepared to take a good bath. But when he was arranging his clothes, there was a sudden clang, and the small brick he picked up during the day fell out of his clothes. He quickly picked it up and took it. Looking at the thing in his hand, there was a thick layer of soil attached to it and it was all caked into lumps. He put it on the ground and knocked it hard several times before finally getting it clean. At this time, he was dumbfounded. All he saw was that the thing in his hand was golden. At a glance, he knew it was a small gold brick. He hurried to his father and told him the story of the gold brick. His father was very happy to hold it in his hand and weigh it. After a moment, he said, just keep it. Maybe it can be used in the future. That night he tossed and turned all night. He knew that there were more than just this one gold brick in the cave, because he just picked up one after tripping, and there should be many more around. Early the next morning, he took two flashlights at home and a small school bag, went to the foot of the mountain, got into the cave, and entered the cave. He followed the original cloth and came to the previous place. He looked around with a flashlight, and then he was completely stunned. He saw that there were all that kind of soil under his feet, neatly spread out in a layer. He randomly picked up a few pieces and knocked them, and the golden color of the soil appeared on them. He had thought before that there must be more here, but he never expected that there would be so many. He was in a panic and at a loss what to do if he could move all these gold bricks home. The whole family would have unimaginable glory and wealth. Thinking of this, he quickly crawled out of the cave and ran home. When he returned home, he told his father about the incident and asked his father to find a few close friends to move the gold bricks back together, but he never expected that at this moment, something would go wrong. When he returned home, his mother was watching something for others, and his father was sitting beside her. His father tiptoed forward and quietly told his father about the incident, but as soon as he finished speaking, his mother suddenly turned her head and said no, those things must not be moved. When my mother said this, she looked very nervous and her tone was very tough. At this time, the old lady was possessed by the fairy family. In other words, although this sentence comes from the mother's mouth, it expresses the meaning of the fairy family. His father felt that something was wrong and quickly sent the spectators away. He knelt in front of the statue and asked the immortal if there was anything wrong with this matter. At this time, his mother Daxon said, those gold bricks cannot be moved. If you want to move them, it is a small matter for me. I am afraid your family will also be punished. You will regret it then. At this point, my friend sighed and said, no wonder they are tempted. Who can be calm in the face of such huge wealth? He went on to say that his grandfather asked them to go home at that time just to discuss the matter. Maybe everyone was afraid of poverty, so they finally decided to move the gold bricks back. 
He said that it took five members of his family three days to remove all the gold bricks in the cave. At this time, he sneered fiercely and said, Now you know where our family's money comes from, right? I asked, What happened next? He said that after they moved the gold bricks home, Lu Zion disappeared within a few days. No matter how much his great grandmother offered sacrifices, it was of no avail. At first, suddenly one day his great grandmother went blind without any warning. At first, her family took her to several hospitals, but they all had no effect. The old lady said forget it, no one in our industry can escape unscathed, so just leave it. Like that, within a few months, the old lady passed away. He died at the age of 87. If his great grandmother's death was a long-lived one, then his grandmother's death was a bit strange. He said that not long after his great grandmother passed away, his grandmother got up one morning and found that she was also blind. She was completely blind and could not see her fingers. Fortunately, my family had money at the time. His father took his grandma around to seek medical advice, both at home and abroad, and finally encountered a phenomenon that was difficult to explain. A degenerated nictitating membrane was found in his grandmother's eyes. What is the nictitating membrane? The so-called instant magic is a kind of eye tissue unique to birds and reptiles, which is used to moisten the eyeballs. You should know that normal humans do not have a nictitating membrane, and humans wet their eyeballs by blinking. In other words, the mutation occurred in his grandma's eyes. From this point of view, it is very possible that his great-grandmother's eyes also had this kind of mutation, which is very strange. Not long after, his grandmother passed away at the age of 64. He continued, Now you know why I left suddenly. Yes, my mother was blind too. He added, but it wasn't just because she was blind that I came home. It was because my father had found a cure and asked me to come home to cooperate. I hurriedly asked him what he could do. He said it was only after his mother became blind that his father realized the seriousness of the problem and discovered that it was most likely a family problem. So I went to the town to find a well-known Shuma immortal family, a younger brother of the fox immortal. When I saw his father, he said, you deserve it. I told you that you can't move, but you still want to move. Don't you think so didn't you find anything when you moved the gold bricks? Only then did his father remember that after they moved the gold bricks, they found that there seemed to be something painted on the soil under the gold bricks with a human head and a snake body. However, the painting was very badly worn and it was not very clear. At that time, they also thought the painting was weird. So they didn't pay much attention to it as they were busy moving gold bricks and dreaming of getting rich. Looking back now, there seems to be some connection between Lu Zion's warning to them and the giant painting. So his father asked the fox fairy what was the connection between these things? Why Lu Zion said, you are in big trouble. Fortunately, your family had a land horse. Otherwise none of you would survive. He wanted to ask more questions, but the fox fairy ignored him. He repeatedly begged and said that he was willing to do whatever it took as long as his wife's illness could be cured. Dima shook his head and said, This matter is very difficult and our immortal cannot make the decision. In the end, Dima saw that he was really pitiful and told him, You go back first, and I will plead with you privately. Let him go to the hall and ask, and come back in three days. Three days later, my friend's father came to Dima's home again. As soon as he entered the door, Dima pulled him over. He said, this matter of yours is indeed very difficult to deal with. If you wait a little longer, be sweeter and say more good things. Maybe there will be hope. The younger brother Ma invited his own fox fairy according to the procedure. But the fox fairy said that he couldn't help him and that he had to bear the consequences of his own sins. His friend's father quickly knelt on the ground. Although he didn't know what they had done wrong at this time. Based on Fox Ferry's attitude, he could realize the seriousness of the matter. In addition, his wife's illness was right in front of him, and she might die suddenly like his mother one day. So he kowtowed repeatedly and kept talking about it, saying some compliments to the immortal. Unexpectedly, he said that the immortal would also really spoke. He said, it's not that I won't help you, it's just that I really have no choice. But seeing that, 
You are so sincere. We are destined to be together. So I will tell you how much trouble you have caused. He said that when his friend's father came to see him three days ago, he mentioned the cave. He knew that this matter was not simple, because the cave was not an ordinary cave, but a mausoleum. He didn't know what was buried in it, but he only heard that it was a very high status and very evil thing. In addition, the mausoleum is a forbidden area for the immortal family like them. No matter what happens, they cannot enter even half a step. Once this rule is broken, their cultivation level will be completely lost, and their souls will be scattered. Never practice for eternity. In addition, there is a great immortal who guards there all the year round. It is said that his Taoism is extremely profound, but no one knows how deep it is. So last time he heard that this matter was related to the tomb, he decisively refused, because he really didn't dare to intervene. Later, his brother Ma kept chanting in front of him, so he went to the entrance of the hall and specially sent Tongshan and Zandi, two envoys, to inquire about this matter. They went to all the nearby pond entrances, but all the immortals were not interested in this matter. Things change after hearing about it. In the end, no one could tell the reason, and no one knew what was buried at the destination. But they didn't get everything. They heard from other ponds that the great immortal who was guarding the soul was actually a big snake, and he even set up a pond by himself and became the immortal family. It was remarkable that there was only one immortal family in each pond. He said that ordinary tankar buildings are being streamlined and must have at least four beams and eight pillars. This basic structure means that at least 12 immortals must be in place in each tankar, and everyone should perform their duties and cooperate with each other to operate the entire tankar. He can support the entire tankar alone. It can be seen that the body of Taozing. In addition, there are rules for the Shumaxon family to establish the entrance of the hall. First, the four beams must be gathered together before they are eligible to enter the entrance of the pond in Liacheng. The so-called four beams refer to the Dingshan beam, to Ocean beam, Shunshan beam and Fenshu beam, that is, the four immortal families. It is not easy for him to break this rule and establish a church on his own. The fox fairy continued, and later the two envoys inquired and said, that the snake fairy's land horse was a woman named Dong, but for some unknown reason, he suddenly withdrew from the hall and left the land horse. So much for that, the fox fairy sighed and said, now you know what's going on. Fox fairy continued, you didn't listen to his dissuasion and took away all the gold bricks in the mausoleum, but it is his duty to protect the mausoleum. What can he do? If it were anyone else, this would be a sad and cruel story. The fox fairy speculated that the person who caused their family to get the strange disease was most likely not the snake fairy, but the thing buried underground. Because if it is a snake fairy, it means that he has completely turned his back, and then it is not as simple as killing a few women. The friend's father asked the fox fairy, what should he do next? The fox fairy told him that a spiritual person was needed to untie the bell. It was useless to ask anyone for this matter at the moment. Other fairy families could not take care of it and did not dare to take care of it. The only way now is to go to the snake fairy and beg him to come forward. The plea may be useful. My friend's father asked anxiously, how many years has it been since he left my house? Besides, Dima was no longer the same person at that time. So where could he be found? The fox fairy thought for a moment and said, there is a way, and whether it succeeds or not depends on the fate between them. He asked his friend's father to place a mahogany treasure case in the place where the snake immortal was originally enshrined, and enshrine the statue of the great immortal again. At the same time, place an incense burner on both sides of the statue, then take a piece of paper ingot and write your name on it, and stand it in front of the statue. Next. Just make sure that the wine is kept flowing and the incense in the incense burner does not go out. When my friend's father returned home, he prepared all the things. According to the instructions of the fox fairy, then he knelt in front of the statue and waited for the snake fairy to return. He poured wine one by one and sprinkled it over and over again, but there was no movement. Until late at night, he suddenly felt a chill all over his body, and then a cold air penetrated his body. His teeth began to chatter, and his whole body began to tremble. It 
didn't take long for him to lose consciousness and became confused. He heard a voice saying, I once advised you not to listen to the anger of the immortal. As a gatekeeper, I should have punished you. As your immortal family, I am really helpless. I begged you again and again. This will save you from misfortunes and small successes. I didn't have the option of not coming at this time. But, now that I'm thinking about my old relationship, I have to take care of it. Now, King Su has collected all the money, and then he knows me as a younger brother and goes to find the immortal. After saying that, the voice disappeared, and then he woke up. Early the next morning, he hurried to find the fox immortal and told him what happened last night. After hearing this, the fox immortal said, The method, he has already told you. First of all, you have to return all the property you took away in full, and then analyze the tomb, and that's pretty much it. After the fox fairy finished speaking, his friend's father sat down on the ground and said how many years have passed since this incident. Those gold bricks have been spent a lot. Now if they are gathered together, wouldn't it be a fairy tale? Tan Hukeson sighed and said, in this case, let it be fate. After saying that, he ignored him. He returned home, returned all the remaining gold bricks at home to the cave, and sold all the things his family had bought over the years. The trustee exchanged them for gold bars and sent them all back. At this point, my friend said, I originally had money in that card, and that's when I took it all out and gave it to my father. After a period of piecing together things, there is still a big gap. In the end, there was really no other way, so they stopped fussing immediately. Afterwards, the two men went into the mountain again and repaired the earth and walls in the cave with their own hands. Then they went home and waited. As a result, he hurriedly asked, what happened? Next, has mother recovered? He nodded and said that after about a month, his mother's eyes could actually see some light clearly. So they quickly took their mother to the hospital for a checkup, and the results surprised them. The hospital said that the mother only had simple late-stage cataracts and no degenerative instant demons were found in her eyes. Later, the hospital performed an operation on his mother, and she recovered soon after. I asked him if you were mistaken. Maybe there was no such thing as a curse. He shook his head and said that after his mother recovered, his father tried to use the same method to invite the snake fairy back and express his gratitude in person. But she knelt in front of the statue for a day and a night. But he never showed up. So he went to find the fox fairy again. The fox fairy sent people to inquire. And found out the news that not long ago. The great immortal who was guarding the spirit was deposed. No. You will never be able to practice again forever. After. Hearing this. I finally understood. I was very emotional and said. This is the great blessing of great cultivation. Your family has really been blessed with eight lifetimes of cultivation. He didn't say anything, just nodded repeatedly. 